الحاجات الموجودة بكل يعني بكل
His presence, however, is amongst all of us here today. This country, and certainly this community, lost a true hero, a legend. Please join me in a moment of silence as we remember the Dean of the U.S. House of Representatives, Congressman John Daniel. At this time, please rise and direct your attention to the Dearborn Police Honor Guard for the presentation of the colors for tonight's investment chart. I remind you to please stay standing at the attention until colors have been retired following the singing performance of our national anthem by Sports and Choir. Thank you. Present.
course, her in-laws, Khaled and Zainab Hamor. Bittersweet for me, but I'll get to that in a 
minute. I was trying to think when I began to prepare my remarks who exactly it was that introduced me to Fatwa. I don't remember if it was Abed or if it was Miriam. I can't remember who, but I know that this community only recommends the best to work in my office. Every single person that has been introduced by this community and has come to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office has turned into a star, and I mean that sincerely. And so I started hearing about her. She came to the office, she started, she was a very young lawyer, and I started hearing stories about her. And her boss at the time, Dennis Daughter, I don't know if Dennis is here, but Dennis likes everybody and he was always telling me good things about her. And I started hearing about how she was handling these big cases and she'd only been in the office for a short while. And then she was, she was giving pleas and she was really serving in a quasi-management role. And I was like, well, are you letting her do that? And then I found out that not only was she well-suited, not only was she a natural-born leader, not only was her decision-making second to none, but I realized just how very talented she was. Even beyond that though, when she had the idea, she and Dennis had this idea for what's called a business protection unit that she birthed. And she took these cases, and sometimes these cases would allow her, would, she would have to, work from home, listening to 70, 80 videotapes and surveillance tapes, and working at home, a busy mother, a Wayne County prosecutor, a community activist, and mother of two children doing all this work and birthing this movement. And she really helped create the first of its kind in the nation of a unit that's doing retail frauds and doing RICO cases, organized retail fraud, and doing cases that really are causing our businesses to leave this community and leave the community of Wayne County. We have several stores and big box stores that were wanted to leave because of the theft was so bad. And she had an idea for this that not only would we punish the people who were stealing this merchandise, but we wanted to help the people that were stealing it. A lot of the people that were doing these crimes were, were drug addicts and had other substance abuse problems. And her idea was not only to punish the people that they were stealing for, but to help them. And to make sure that they got the treatment and the things that they needed to return to society. I cannot tell you how, I'll be honest, I was quite upset when I found out she was leaving the office. Um, I was kind of a little stunned, but I knew very instantly how important it was. And if I didn't understand that before just now, when I heard your applause for her, when I see the breadth and depth of the community support that she has and how important this is to her community, I get it now. I thoroughly understand. Some absolutely wonderful people from this community have started in my office, and I'm very proud of that, including the Attorney General herself. I am so going to miss her. I'm going to miss her so much, her ideas her dedication, her passion, her morality, her wanting to do things that are right, but at the same time wanting to help the people that needed help. I have been blessed to know her in my office for these past eight years, and I'm blessed to know her now. And I'm happy to be working with her on some projects in the future. She's kind of going to be my boss, I think, on some of these projects. So I, I can go on and on with platitudes. They are so heartfelt. This is such a big deal. This is such a piece of history. And I'm so part, so proud to be a small part of it. I'm so proud of her. And she's going to serve this state very well. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for being a part of the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Thank you for wanting to carry your passion for justice to a whole new level. And I thank this community for embracing me in my office. So proud they mean so much to me. And I will continue to bring people into my office from this community because I know they're all going to start. Our next speaker hails from Bandak, an ancient city known for two things, its ancient ruins and for producing some of the toughest people on the planet. Legend has it that a lost civilization of giants laid the massive foundations upon which the Romans built their magnificent temple to Jupiter, the Roman god of justice. It hardly seems coincidental that Osama Sablani found his way here to the toughest city in America and made himself an indispensable unapologetic, and fearless advocate for justice. For 35 years, Osama has told our stories as a Hall of Fame journalist and publisher, 
of our community's newspaper, Southern Lapa, or as most of you know it, the Arab American News. He is a community treasure and a guiding light for so many like me, who he embraced and mentored. Sir Isaac Newton once said that he saw further than those who preceded him only because he stood on the shoulders of giants. There will be many generations of Arab American leaders who will see further than even we can see today because one man had the courage to tell our stories. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome my mentor, my friend, my brother, and the giant who has willingly lent his shoulders to generations of our community's best and brightest champions of justice, Osama Sublime. Thank you very much, Zena. Actually, I am from West Coast. Salam alaikum. Brothers and sisters, it is with great honor that I stand before you here today to witness and be part of this historic moment. Fadwa Hamoud is a bright leader and has made history at a very young age. She is certainly the pride and joy of this community. She is our gift to the state of Michigan that we love and we choose to have at our home. And let me tell you that the best is yet to come. But, my dear brothers and sisters, let's give the credit where it belongs to those who deserve it and earned it. I'll start by thanking you, our community, who went out to vote last November in unprecedented record, voted overwhelmingly, giving 80% of our votes to Dana National. We're going to work on the 20% in the next four years. <laughs> and I want to take this opportunity to say thank you also, and many thanks, to the millions of Michigander voters that made Dana Nessel's historic win possible on November. <laughs> so we can celebrate today. Also, I will never forget as I stand here to thank APAC members for their work for the last 21 years that has been paying dividends year after year. Thank you, APAC. And, and a big special thank you goes to Attorney General Dana Nassim for breaking the mold and making history in so many ways. Dana Nassim made promises during that campaign. Her and I remember those promises, and it started way even before the primary, at Beatles Banquet, in the presence of Ali Dazi and, and other people as well. She proved that she is a leader that is not like your usual leaders and politicians, that makes promises during the campaign, which usually and quickly forgotten after they take office. Not them. For that, we are very thankful and appreciative. Since she announced her campaign for Michigan's Attorney General and our first meeting, Dana Nessel has made promises that so far she kept, and we have no doubt she will continue to keep. It is no wonder, brothers and sisters, because she has been mentored by and supported, like Fadwa Hamoud and Judge Maryam Bazi, an assistant U.S. Attorney Abu Hamoud, by the most respected prosecutor in the country, I meant the Honorable Kim Worthy. <laughs> and, for that, and for that, on your behalf, we thank today, Kim. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and finally, before I step down, and while we are talking about leaders and public servants that keep their promises. I would like to thank Wayne County 
Executive Warren Evans for appointing our brother Asad Turfa as the Chief of Staff in his administration. And we cannot forget today to give a big salute to the legendary Congressman John D. Dingell, who passed away on Thursday. And we will never, and we, he will never be forgotten. Our sincere condolences to his wife, our Congresswoman, Debbie Dingell, and his family, and all the American people. To my daughter, and my leader, the Honorable Fadwa Hamoud, I say congratulations, and you make us so proud. prosecutor who was the lead attorney in charge of the deed and mortgage fraud task force. She oversaw a multi-agency unit that prosecuted finance, crime, and other high-profile cases. As a prosecutor, she was recognized by lawyers, judges, and litigants as being tough but fair. I sometimes tease her about that, actually. A reputation that caught the attention of former Governor Rick Snyder, who appointed her to the Wayne County Third Circuit Court in 2017, where she currently presides over felony matters in the Frank County Hall of Justice. She previously served on the Dearborn Board of Education, the Michigan Middle Eastern Affairs Commission, was the president of the Arab American Political Action Committee, was active in the Dearborn Dearborn Heights League of Women Voters, and was recently honored by Crane's magazine as one of its 40 under 40 for her contributions to the community and her profession. I still don't believe she's under 40, but that's okay. We'll have that conversation later. This is the abbreviated version of her political involvement and accomplishments. If I listed everything she has done, trust me, we'd be here all night. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome a shining star in our community, a beautiful person on the inside and out, Judge Marion Rossi. Herself, and I was just trying to wash my hands really quickly so I could shake hers. <laughs> and uh, well, the forum wasn't exactly what she was expecting, the exchange itself was very much Fedwa. She saw a woman with similar interests and similar uh, in a similar field and wanted that opportunity to connect and build a relationship. Because you see, to Fedwa, it was important for women to work together and for women to support each other. Now, while I had met Fedwa for the first time on that, on that day, what she didn't realize is I had already heard about her. I had heard about this young woman who's involved in her school, involved in the community, and doing wonderful things, and I really very much wanted to meet her myself. And I've had the opportunity to meet and observe Fedwa for, on so many different uh, occasions and so many different capacities since that initial encounter. Meetings, whether it was meetings at APAC, meetings at the Board of Education, or in my courtroom with opposing counsel, or get togethers as assistant prosecutors to discuss our cases, or with friends over dinner or coffee discussing our marriages, motherhood, and, uh, and our careers. And for the sake of marriages, the one thing I have to say is Ma our magistrate, Ali Hamoud, has been an amazing, incredible backbone to Fedwa, and I think that is <laughs> In all those capacities, I've come to see Fedwa as truly a special person who is uniquely qualified to serve as our Solicitor General. 
See, it does not matter what, you, what position you place Fedwa in, what role or title you give her. Her character and traits are always consistent, and I'd like to highlight a few of those traits. First, Fedwa is a fierce advocate. Whether she was advocating on behalf of a community issue, on behalf of a victim in court, or on behalf of a child, a teacher, or school in the district, she always goes out of her way to give a voice to the voiceless. Working with her, you can quickly recognize she's effective at it because she genuinely believes her job is to do what is just and what is right, even when many times that is the harder course. Second, Fedwa is kind and compassionate. It does not matter whether she was sitting with friends, debating and arguing issues with adversaries, or speaking with people who she had just met or would never meet again. She always treated them the same, regardless of their race, their age, their gender, their position, their position. none of that mattered to her. Everyone was always treated with respect and kindness, not because there was anything to gain or she thought anyone was watching, it was because that is who she is. I once saw a quote that reminded me of Fedor and I sent it to her. Don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Frankly, I believe her kindness is what makes her strong. great intellect and foresight. I have observed her on countless occasions to quietly observe a room, take in the information around her, and then speak. She was always articulate, and her words were grounded in fact and logic. She took the time to consider not only the present consequences of any decision, but the future consequences as well. She also, she made sure she heard opposing views and was never afraid to change her mind if reason dictated it. It is for those reasons when she would say something, people would listen. Our Solicitor General is going to be taking on issues and arguing them to the U.S. Supreme Court, and there is no question that Fedwa has the experience and ability to do that. But having the foresight to see which issues and concerns we should be addressing so that tomorrow's Michigan is better than today's, well, that is what will set Fedwa apart as she discharges this very important function. Frankly, I could continue and talk about her humility, her sense of civic duty, her wicked sense of humor, and her many other traits, but it's my understanding I only have like about 15 seconds left. <laughs> Attorney General Dana Nessel, I want to end by thanking you for this appointment, not because Fedwa is the first Arab American wo woman or Muslim American to serve as a Solicitor General in the US, even though that is something that this community is very proud of as evidenced by this very room. I am thanking you for recognizing what all Michiganders needed in a Solicitor General, in seeing and recognizing those attributes in Fedwa Hamoud. I may be biased, but I believe history will show that this decision was definitely a wise one. <laughs> we are also very proud of you, and on behalf of all of your friends, we are honored to be your friends. say I did that on purpose because Abbas Adewiye needs an introduction on his own. Abbas is a public health and social policy professional who currently serves as the legislative assistant to Congressman Andy Levin in Washington, D.C. His portfolio consists of a broad array of domestic policy issues, areas including education, energy, environment, immigration, civil rights, and gun violence. A two-time graduate of the University of Michigan, Abbas earned his Bachelor of Science in Sociocultural Anthropology as a William Brem Scholar and his Master of Public Health in Global Health Management and Policy. Most importantly, I'm sure you'll all be happy to hear this, Abbas is a proud Fordson High School graduate. <laughs> a proud uncle to Hattie and Julia, and proudest of all, a little brother, the proudest little brother in the whole world. You'll see when he comes up why I put that in air quotes. Please help me welcome our best, Bud was much taller than him. Good 
boards and look around. I'm standing probably a few feet left, stage left, of where Fadwa was on these stairs. She went up these stairs, she had these two pigtails. She was playing Romeo and Juliet. In Romeo and Juliet. She was Juliet, a modern day Juliet wearing pink. This is a special place. This is a special place that is at the center of Pufu's work. Not just because she graduated from here, but because this place has been important to her as a Dearborn School Board trustee. As I come and, and enter this space and, and look, at, look out at all of you, I'm so incredibly humbled and so incredibly grateful for each of you being here. But I also have to recognize that there are so many more people who are here in spirit, who I wish were here too. See, because to understand anything about Fadwa, for this ceremony only, I'll call her Fadwa. Everyone knows her as Fufu. Let's just all acknowledge that. <laughs> this is Fufu, but today, the Solicitor General Fadwa Hamu. See, to understand anything about Fufu or, or me, one has to understand that our experience of immigration to this country is not just a story of hope. It is also a story of deep childhood pain. You see, one thing that inextricably links me to Michigan Solicitor General isn't just that we shared a bunk bed, or that I would often insist that she not sleep on the top bunk and sleep on the mattress so I can talk to you late into the night, or that there was one day where I got to beg for the bunk bed and then we had to share a full-size bed and that was the whole thing. I'm linked to this woman, this incredible woman, because of our connection to this incredible old farmer currently sitting in Arnur, Lebanon, named Insaf Karim, Haji Zuhair, our grandmother. And I, I need to tell you about that woman in this moment. Because to understand anything about that, about Fadwa, you have to understand that Hajj and Zuhair is the kind of woman who, when I was stuck in the war in Lebanon in 2006, she was there too, that we would be on the phone. Her persistent prayer was, may God protect everyone so that we may be among the ones who survive. That is where Fadwa comes from, and that is the love that she grew from. And so I'm here today to let you know, as someone who knows this incredible woman intimately, you can trust her. You can trust her judgment because love is at the center of her decision making, is at the center of every decision she makes in the work that she will do for the people of the state of Michigan. I, 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 want, I want to say that, that the experience of immigration is amazing, but there is pain there, and that pain isn't to be ignored. Because when Fedwa watches the television and sees what's happening in our country with kids being put in cages, she understands that that experience of immigration was a trauma in and of itself, and that in a country made of immigrants, it is reprehensible that such actions are made at the federal level. Fedwa will make sure that the state of Michigan is a place of all people. But it's not just pain, because we got here. And Fedwa is here, and there is hope. We got here, my father's family is mostly in Lebanon and in other places throughout the world. But we got here and we found out that there was this incredible woman, probably half my size, named Hajjim Ali Fahidouz. And 
Hashim Anith is my great grandmother. She passed last year. She was near 100 years old. And Hashim Anith had, and one time I counted it with my cousins, Hashim Anith currently has over 170 living descendants, all of whom are Arab American. What an incredible place to immigrate to. In a country where you hear people at the highest offices talking about chain migration as a bad word, heck, chain migration led to the next Solicitor General of the state of Michigan. I like chain migration. So we got here and we met our Sittu Manife and the path that Fedwa is walking on, this path of public service, isn't one that we happened upon on accident. It is one that comes through hard work, it is one that comes through determination, but it is also one that has been paved by people who came before us, like Hajj Manif's oldest son, my uncle Abdul Haydouz. <laughs> my uncle Abdul was the first Muslim American mayor in the United States. And now he serves as a county commissioner here in the, city, in the county of Wayne. And that is the type of person that Fedwa had an example to follow on. And just to get an understanding of the extent of Manifiz, Haji Manifiz's uh, reach, I want everyone who is related to Haji Manifiz to please stand and be recognized for our amazing connection to that person. <laughs> we were separated from in Lebanon, we found an, an incredible woman who passed in 2010, and that was our second mother, Hasha Iman Bezzi. May she rest in peace. And she's here with us today, in our hearts. But as I look around and I look at all of your faces and thank you for being here, and think about everyone who's not in this room and thank them for being here, I'm still I still owe a debt of gratitude to two incredible individuals who are seated somewhere on this stage. I need you all to know that my mother is someone who worked three jobs for most of our growth. I need you all to know that on days when she couldn't be home, to raise us in person, she would be on the phone at one and two at night from her third job, making sure we finished our homework and that we were going to bed. And I need you to know about Fadwa's father, Zuhair Alawiyu. I need you to understand, Amu, that it can be difficult being raised by a man who speaks in metaphors. <laughs> because in every action, in every decision, there was a bigger picture. And if we weren't thinking about that bigger picture, we were doing something wrong. Please continue. <laughs> and so, if you will join me, this is a very special moment for Fedwa. This is a very special moment for me and for everyone who knows her, including all of you, I'd like for all of us to give a very well-deserved standing round of applause for these two incredible human beings who had on the way Number of 
elected officials here with us today. And um, I'm gonna ask you to stand if, if you can, please, so that we can acknowledge your grateful presence. So please stand. Just to save on the time, I respect everybody's time. Please, if you're an elected Republican, please stand. So I wanted to specifically note the presence of our first Muslim American, U.S. Air Force JAG, Maisa Uza, who is here with us today. <laughs> Maisa took time away from duty to be here with us today. So Maisa, we appreciate your service to this country and certainly your support of the many strong women in this community and beyond. Thank you for being here today. Uh, in the continuation of thank yous, uh, we also want to thank Lapita for providing the wonderful spread that is outside for the reception, Chief Mike Jaffer in the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, Chief Ron Haddad and the Dearborn Police Department for providing the security and obviously keeping things maintained and going through. So thank you all very much. Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist sent their regrets, although they truly wanted to be here, they could not make it. We want to thank Faye Roussa, a senior, senior official in her administration, for attending on their behalf. Thank you, Faye Roussa. In a country that is built on the rule of law, there are few offices more important than that of the Attorney General, because that is the people's lawyer. Dana Nussel's legal career is a case study in breaking the mold, not accepting the status quo, and fighting for the rights of the downrotten. She is not pro-prosecution or pro-defense. She is pro-justice. She spent years in the trenches as an assistant Wayne County prosecutor. You guys get the theme here, Wayne County prosecutors and mothers handling some of Wayne County's most difficult cases in the child abuse unit. In private practice, she learned what it was like to stand as defense counsel for those accused of violating the law, many of whom were indigent and could not afford an attorney. She served as plaintiff's counsel in cases involving civil rights violations by the government. But one of her greatest achievements is the precedent-setting case, DeBoer versus Snyder. If you don't know about it, I urge you to look it up. This case challenged the bans on adoption and marriage for same-sex couples in Michigan. This landmark case legalized same-sex marriage nationwide. However, Dana doesn't look to make headlines, she looks to make a difference. Thanks to Dana Nessel, our nation is safer and freer. More Americans, regardless of race, religion, gender, creed, or sexual orientation, receive fair and equal treatment under the law. She has assembled a team that will represent the people well, especially in her appointment of Fadwa Hamoud as Michigan's 12th Solicitor General. It is my privilege and honor to welcome our newest political trailblazer to the stage, Attorney General Dana Nassau. Thank God. Um, and honestly, I, I had 
to get torn in with the governor and lieutenant governor and secretary of state um, just to get a crowd half the size. So <laughs> credit to you, Bubba. Um, so to say that Bubba Hamoud is an incredibly special person is sort of to say that the Palace of Versailles is a nice house or that Donald Trump is not the best president. <laughs> So if I had uh, 10 hours with all of you today, I couldn't even possibly begin to extol the many virtues, qualities, and characteristics that create the woman I chose to be my Solicitor General. Uh, so instead, I'll only take eight hours because I'm known for my long speeches. When Fedwa was born in her native village of Arden, Lebanon, her father, Zohara, went up to the glass window of the hospital nursery. He looked around at the 10 or 15 babies inside and spotted the one with the giant head, who was the only child not crying. <laughs> Instead, eyes open, she was looking around, listening and observing everyone in the room. That's the one, that's my baby. The one looking out for all the others, he told the nurse. So Hare told his wife, Ida, that it was at that moment that he knew he had an advocate on their hands who was destined to spend a lifetime looking out for the welfare of others. And 33 years later, no one can be certain he actually took home the right kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> you will keep her. So, bad guys, you know, came to this country from Lebanon with her parents and her younger brother, Abbas, at the age of 11. She knew no English at all but was thrilled at the opportunity to soak in all that America had to offer her. And she dove deeply into her studies, uh, learning the language as quickly as she could. But you know, sometimes it was a struggle for her. In middle school, Fadwa learned quickly to appreciate the public school system here in Dearborn, and the teachers who worked so earnestly to help immigrant children learn. In the seventh grade at Lower Reed Middle School, she had an English teacher who Fadwa badly wanted to thank for all of his help. But she was so new to this country, she didn't know how. She asked some classmates to provide the words, but instead of thank you, they substituted another word for thank, one that starts with the letter F. <laughs> so young Fadwa brought the teacher in an apple after class and proudly displayed her new English skills, which ended in a phone call to her mother. <laughs> but years later, Fadwa ended up having the same girl as a defendant in one of her cases, teaching us all that God works in mysterious ways, <laughs> and also maybe don't mess with Fadwa. a top-notch litigator skilled in the arts of persuasion and advocacy for victims, but she hasn't always used her powers for good. When she was 12, she convinced her brother that she was the actual messiah for a full week. <laughs> when he finally worked up the courage to ask his mother if indeed that was true, Fadwa conceded that she just wanted to see if it would work and also because she was bored. <laughs> but she learned her skills of persuasion, obviously, at a very early age. In high school here at Fortson, Fadwa co-wrote, produced, and starred in an Arabic-English comedy called M. Hussein, performed on this very stage 16 years ago. It was then that Fadwa playing M. Hussein, a working-class Arab woman who, in one scene, finds herself placing an order at a restaurant far exceeding her budget, delivered the unforgettable line, We'll have bread and water, and for dessert, crushed ice. It was also on this stage in which Fadwa was presented with the Fordson High School George T. Martin Award for Leadership and Commitment to Serving Others. And good old friend, well, she was just getting started. She went on to graduate from the University of Michigan Dearborn and then my alma mater, Wayne State University Law School, or the Harvard of Detroit, as I must call it. She quickly passed the bar exam and soon found a home at the Wayne County Prosecutor's 
prosecutor's office, where her legal skills and talents were obvious to everyone who practiced in the county. And she excelled in each and every one of her assignments in the district courts, trial division, auto theft unit, uh, and in creating the brand new unit you heard about, uh, the business protection unit. And after only seven years in the office, she was promoted to the position of lead attorney, uh, which is amazing because some people work in that office for many years longer and never get promoted to that position. Um, no one I know who might still be bitter about it. <laughs> convictions, but that's not the remarkable part of the case. The mother of one of the young men was, as you would expect, devastated by the loss of her son, and Fadwa spent months counseling the woman on how to accept and live on after her child's death, spending just as much time consoling her as she did handling the case itself, which is simply not part of the job description of a prosecutor. Ultimately, that woman told her that she was more grateful for Fadwa's counseling than she was for the conviction. Everyone knows, especially everyone on this stage, that uh, being a Wayne County Assistance Prosecutor is tough. You know, they are the most overworked and underpaid anywhere in the state, although I hope that's about to change. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yet Fadwa has always seen her job uh, to help communities she served in a way that few others ever really do. Her job wasn't just to convict people or ensure lengthy prison sentences. It was to help in any way she can, in every way that she can. Even more impressive than her legal acumen in the courtroom, Fadwa also had a reputation at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office for being the most fabulous amateur beautician in the metropolitan Detroit area. On many occasions, the women in the office would line up for basic tutorials on the final parts of lip liner application and eyebrow grooming. <laughs> in the event someone had a wedding to attend, Fabio was immediately conscripted to assist with the preparations whether she had it intended to or not. Fadwa also is known for her uncanny ability to rap Nicki Minaj and Cardi B anthems. And she is the life of every party, despite having never ingested alcohol in her life. Which makes no sense. She was the ruling fashionista of Frank Murphy, where her ability to accessorize went unmatched. On more than one occasion during sentencing on her cases, the judge had asked a defendant who Fadwa had just convicted if he had anything he would like to say in regard to his sentence only to have the defendant respond, damn, Ms. Amun is fine. <laughs> Friends, please appreciate how impressive it is. When your work is utilized to send a person to prison, and the defendant's only response is to compliment you in return. <laughs> only Fadwa. Fadwa is widely known for her ability to create stalkers, men and women alike, who follow her everywhere. She has such a knack for making each and every person she comes into contact with believe that she is their best friend that often they assume they really are. So on behalf of everyone who works at uh, PPO Court here in Wayne County, we thank you. <laughs> Fadu is also a devoted wife to her husband, Ali, who is an amazing lawyer in his own right, uh, and who proposed to her in Judge David Allen's courtroom. She is a doting mother upon her son, Hattie, and their daughter, Julia, and many a night I have called her with some emergency or other, only to be 
interrupting her nightly bedtime readings with them both, except for they are the ones always reading to her, and they are three and four years old because they have already inherited their mother's passion for learning and because she has taught them so incredibly well. Fadwa is indeed an exceptional lawyer, but she is an even better person. And her contributions to her community, her state, and her nation are seemingly boundless. In her first run for office, having just had her daughter, Julia, she was elected as a trustee and later treasurer of the Dearborn Public School Board and also Henry Ford Community Board, uh, Community College Board. She was appointed by Governor Rick Snyder to the Commission on Middle Eastern Affairs, and she sits on the Legislative Committee for the Hispanic, Latino, Asian, Pacific American, and Middle Eastern Affairs Commission. She's also the Vice President of APAC, the Arab American Political Action Committee, and she is a graduate of the Harvard Business School Young American Leaders Program, and just reciting her biography right now makes me exhausted. <laughs> Baba was indispensable to me during my campaign, standing by me from the beginning of my candidacy uh, to the horrible ice storm spring convention, to standing uh, on stage with me on election night, and comforted me when I wasn't even sure that I would win. Fadwa believed in me and the commitment we shared in having an office of attorney general that subscribed to the concept of empathy and for all and equal protection for everyone in this state. And I know I would never be in this position had it not been for her strength, her determination, and her uncanny ability to talk me off the ledge during the worst of my panic attacks. The position of Solicitor General is arguably one of the most important in the AG's office. And I immediately knew I needed Fadwa in this critical position, but I was concerned as I could biologically be her mother and then some. So I asked a mutual colleague, our friend Jamie, who in her own right is one of the best litigators I've ever met, and I said, Fadwa's so young. Do you think she's up to the job? And she quickly responded, Fadwa can do anything. And I said, I mean, not anything, right? Like, she can't fly, she's not magic. <laughs> and she said, well, I can work with her a little bit more. Maybe you'll change your mind. Uh, so, Fadwa, watch out for Jamie, because she might be one of your stalkers, just saying. <laughs> Immediately following my election, I scheduled an appointment to speak with Wayne County Prosecutor, Kim Worthy. And, uh, you know, Kim, Kim was my first support her during the campaign, um, and I, of course, I'm so grateful for her choosing me back when I was clearly not the party favorite, nor the front runner when I announced. Um, but I agreed that I would not pillage her office of her best lawyers should I win, since I could undoubtedly offer them a better salary and benefits and a more reasonable workload than they would have at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. <laughs> but I had this one exception, and I needed to make my case for it. So I told Kim that while I intended to keep my commitment to her, there was one prosecutor I absolutely could not run my office without. And when I told her this, Kim immediately responded, not Fadwa, anyone but Fadwa. <laughs> but after some convincing, Kim was kind enough to relent, um, although you would think I asked her for a kidney. <laughs> and uh, eventually allowed me to steal one of her most prized staffers. And of course, I am so grateful to her for allowing me to do so because I honestly don't know what I would do without Fadwa. Anyone who knows her understands uh, her, she just has a way about her that really no one else does. You know, she's a visionary, she's a scholar, and she commands respect in absolutely every room she enters. But in a way that makes you love her, even if you start the conversation with a stark difference of opinion. And I will, I will tell you this last story, you know, in November I took her with me to Charleston for the annual National Association of Attorneys General Conference. I had just been elected, uh, and all the AGs from the state uh, and across the nation were there. And I was incredibly nervous, and I felt weirdly out of place, um, because I'm used to spending my days in the witness room of Frank Murphy or in the lockup at the county jail, visiting clients, of course. Uh, and you know, this was this was such a new environment for me, and all the ostentatious, you know, hotel ballrooms with some of the most important politicians and lobbyists around the country. I was nervous, and, and I was intimidated, but not Baba. 
I hung back while she strode around the room, confidently introducing herself to everyone present. And I saw her engaging in a very animated conversation with a Republican AG from Montana, uh, who pronounced her name Fedra. <laughs> and uh, when she finished, you know, I asked her, well, what were you guys talking about? And she said, I just invited me onto his ranch in Missoula and gave me a commemorative coin. <laughs> but that's my way, you know, you don't have to have a single thing in common with her, but she always has a way of making everybody feel special. So when I took this office, by far the most difficult issue facing the office was what to do with the Flint criminal cases, which had dragged on for years at a cost of nearly $10 million to the state, and which almost the entire office of Attorney General had been conflicted out of due to civil cases that the office was also handling. But I immediately knew that there was only one person that I could trust with some of the most important and complex cases, not just in the history of our state, but in the history of our nation. And of course, that was Fadwa. And I know that with her on the case, as at long last, the residents of Flint will receive the dignity and the justice that they so badly need and so badly deserve. Fadwa is my, my ears, my eyes, and my heart at the office. Whenever I'm conflicted on how a case or a situation should be handled, I always know I have her to turn to so that I can be confident that we're doing the right thing. Not just from a technical or a legal perspective, but from a moral and ethical standpoint. Fadwa is a warrior for justice, and her dedication to public service is unmatched by anyone I have ever known, and I've known a lot of incredible public servants. Fadwa is a barrier breaker, and she will continue to be. You've already heard that she's the first female Solicitor General in Michigan history, and the first Muslim and Arab American Solicitor General in the history of the United States. I am so thrilled to have her in my office and to share her many talents with our state. But honestly, I'm even more grateful to be able to call her my friend. accepting this important position along with all the tireless hours that it entails, and thank you in advance for the many incredible things you are destined to accomplish for the benefit of our state and of this nation. Thank you. Brother.
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام Good afternoon. Let me start by thanking each and every single one of you. Respected community members, elected officials and dignitaries, colleagues, both my Department of Attorney General family and my Wayne County Prosecutor's Office family, law enforcement officers and investigators, Dearborn Public Schools and Henry Ford College, board members, staff, students, our president, APAC colleagues, family and friends, thank you so much for being here. I also owe gratitude to scores of family and friends in Lebanon who I wish could be here. Master of Ceremonies, Zena. Thank you for being the eloquent, strong, the resilient woman I continue to look up to, both figuratively and literally. <laughs> Osama, it's a misconception that you don't have children. You've got many here tonight, and I'm proud to call you a second father. <laughs> Judge Bazzi, Maria. I continue to be inspired by your dedication to serve, and I am forever indebted to you for your guidance, love, and friendship. <laughs> Believe me when I say that words will fail in describing my gratitude today. With that said, it is with great hope for the future of our state, and because of the strength each of you have given me, I am prepared to elevate my level of service to represent our state in the highest of courts as your Solicitor General. Yes, it's true that an Arab Muslim person has not held this office before. I carry those identities and all that they teach me about loving equity and justice with me into this work. Alhamdulillah. It is also true that a woman has never held this office in our state. I assume this office knowing that generations of women before me made unfathomable sacrifices that have allowed an immigrant, English as a second language girl like me, allow me to dare to aspire to the highest levels of public service. Women like my grandmother, Haji Zuhair, like my mother, Aida Bazzi, my grandmother, Fadwe, who's here today. My grandmother in Lebanon taught her nine children the value of reading, writing, and poetry with just a fifth grade education. My mother, a civil servant, an area school teacher, and a principal, earned a two-year college degree and used it to teach Arabic to a generation of Dearborn children. I'm also able to succeed because I had strong allies and men around me who helped me when I needed a hand and also who knew how to get out of my way when I needed them to. I thank my husband my partner. Ali, who knows just how to advocate for me in those moments when I'm struggling to advocate for myself. And Abbas, my brother. I have always been guarded by my big little brother. He is the compassionate giant whose heroic attributes are measured by the size of his heart. I thank my grandfather, Haj Abishawab. An educator and generous source of light in our family. And I thank my father, Zuhair Alawi. Who instilled in me an unshakable passion for justice, 
when he would sit my brother and I down and insist that it is never acceptable to side with the oppressor over the oppressed. That passion is one Ali and I are working hard to pass to our children, Hattie and Julia. I have been presented with this opportunity to advance the cause of justice at the state level because I have benefited from the mentorship, mentorship of none other than our Wayne County Prosecutor, Kim Worthing. Yeah. Kim is a fierce fighter for justice and a leader like no other. During my time at Wayne County, she led, and I watched, and I learned. Under her leadership, I strove to keep our community safe through fair, thoughtful, and compassionate applications of our laws. And I am grateful to you, Kim, for teaching me how. Thank you. And my work at the prosecutor's office led me to meet the people's lawyer, Attorney General Dana Ness. our Attorney General step up to the plate as a relentless advocate for the rights of all people. At a time when the people in this great nation are under attack. Dana, I want you to know that I am proud to work alongside you because of your commitment to creating a more socially just realities for communities. Today, the people can rest assured that you have built a team fundamentally driven by a commitment to social justice. Madam Attorney General, on behalf of all of us here tonight, thank you for honoring me with this opportunity to serve. We started today's program with a moment of silence for the Dean of the People's House. And I'd like for us to come full circle. In his last words, Mr. John Dingle imparted with wisdom that I urge us to reflect upon when thinking about the role of the public servant in American life. He said, in, in democratic government, elected officials do not have power. They hold power and trust for the people who elected them. They hold power and trust for the people who elected them. In my role as Solicitor General, I promise you to never act as someone who has power. Rather, I promise to hold the power of this position and trust for you all, the people who elected our Attorney General. I am ready. I am ready now to hold this power because I understand that the power belongs to Michigan's vibrant communities of individuals who lift each other up, of individuals with shared hopes and dreams for a fair and just society. The people have the power. I want you all to know that I intend to partner with our Attorney General to use the law as an instrument for social change and to help give a voice to individuals outmatched by the system. I have great hopes in what we can accomplish together for the state of Michigan. Let's do this. Thank you.
uh, our Wayne County Commissioner Sam Bayou, who was recently elected, will be hosting his investiture on Monday the 15th. Doors open at 5 30. Program begins at 6. On the 18th, I'm sorry. At the Gordon Community Performing Arts Center.